would be rather just kicking it somewhere in front of the TV, but God's called us to assemble us. Come on, for such a time as this. Come on, we got to get ourselves straight. We got to get in the presence of God. We got to hear from God. We got to be. We got to be stirred up and fired up and set forth by with the power of God upon us. Amen. So I just want to challenge you because God is calling us out of the conformity of yesterday. Come on. He's calling us to be in a higher dimension this hour. Come on. He's calling us up higher. He's calling us up higher. And we've got to hear. We've got to hear God. And we've got to follow him into what he's calling us to. Amen. And we're having a little in and out on the microphone, but that's okay. Amen. And God, we just thank you, Lord God, for this blessed sound system. And that the prince of the power of the air will not distract it, will not disrupt it, will not interrupt it in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we just give you praise right now. Because the enemy does not like our sound, but that's okay. Because we're going to deafen him. Come on. We're going to lift up the high praises of God. And we're going to take authority over this atmosphere in this region and on this street. And that death spirit and that poverty spirit come on, that's over in this area, we're going to see breakthrough. We're going to see it dispelled. We're going to see it lifted. We're going to see the cloud of the glory of God hovering over this territory and over this region. And it's going to impact life. It's going to impact families. It's going to impact the street. Because the highways and the byways are going to be transformed. It's because we decided that we're not going to remain the same. We decided we don't have to sit in front of the TV and let the world overtake our lives. We decided that we're not going to be conformed to the ways of the world. Come on. We're going to be conformed to the image of Jesus. Come on. We have glory in our bones. Come on. We've been created in glory. Come on. Oh, come on. And when the enemy looked at them, they would see the word of God. 
and then we're not be able to mess with them. Because they would come to the place and say, it is written. And then, and then you would have to get behind them just like you did Jesus. Yeah. Come on, get behind me, Satan. It is written. Get behind me, Satan. It is written. Get behind me, Satan. It is written. There's power in what is written. But if you don't put what is written inside of you, you can't release it to the enemy the way he believes it. Yeah. Oh, come on. We've got to be convincing to the enemy. Because he's so busy about being convincing to us. Like I said, a lot of people that don't renew their minds in the word, they're easily, what, deceived. Yeah. They're easily, easily. Yes. And then they become like these dried up bones. Yes. Come on. They become like these dried up bones. Yes. They begin to wither in the spirit. There's no life. There's no life. Yes. Because they're not allowing themselves to come to the place of being renewed by the word of God. They begin to dry up. Bone. Interesting enough, in Hebrew and Greek means self-esteem, self and substance. Now think about that. I don't know why the Lord had me on this this morning. I kept seeing bones, bones, bones. And then I began to dig before I left out of the house this morning. I said, okay, God, what does Hebrew and Greek for bone mean? And, it, and I looked it up and it was self-esteem, self and substance. Proverbs 17, 22, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. Matthew 23, 27, woe to you, Pharisees, scribes. He was, Jesus was coming down on them. He said, you're full of dead man's bones. That religious spirit was in their bones. Come on. It had dried up their bones. Proverbs 14, 30, a heart of peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. There you go again. Envy rots the bones. Do you know that arthritis and some bone diseases, the spiritual roots are envy, jealousy, and unforgiveness? Come on. How many people are dealing with arthritis? That is destruction of the enemy. But you have to trace back and make sure you don't have any jealousy. Make sure you don't have any envy. Make sure that you don't have any unforgiveness. So that you can shut down that spiritual root that's progressing and bringing destruction. Come on. Then it has no legal grounds to affect your bones. Um, and the other thing is, if you look at substance, because that was one of the meanings of bone was substance. And that is a definition. The real physical matter of which a person or thing consists of, which is a tangible, solid presence. So substance is the essence of who you are, right? And the essence of who you are is found in your bones. And if you look at Joshua, in Joshua 24, 32, the Israelites brought Joseph's bones out from Egypt. Why were the bones so important that they had to bring them out of Egypt? Elisha's bones in 2 Kings 13, 21, they threw the man's body into Elisha's tomb, and the man came up from life to life. Why? Because there was anointing in those bones. That was his substance, right? Even the very bones brought life. So there's a warfare over the substance of who we are. There's a warfare over our self, over our self-esteem. How many people know that if you're walking around with no self-esteem, you don't possess your dream? Whoa. Come on. Damn it. If you've got no self-esteem, you don't possess your dream. Because you don't connect with who God says you are. And if you don't connect with your purpose and destiny and who God says you are, you're not going to begin to walk in it. Come on. So we low self-esteem. So the enemy is after our substance. He's after who we are in Christ. And it's in our bones. It's in our DNA. It's in who God created us to be. Amen? Jude 1-9, Archangel Michael, he disputed with the devil about the bones of Moses. Yeah. An archangel fought with the devil for the bones of Moses. Yeah. How important were those bones? Yeah. Come on. How important are your bones? that God's trying to show me. Because substance, you think about substance, you think faith is the substance of things hoped for with the evidence of things unseen. So if you think faith is substance, substance is faith, and God says that in, 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 in paralyzed in the Hebrew and Greek, that bones is substance. Think about what that's saying. If substance is faith, then faith is substance, and substance is in the bones. Oh, come on now. Get this. Faith is substance. Substance is faith. And faith, I mean, substance is in your bones. Do you understand? That there is faith, substance in your bones. There's miracle working power in your bones. Come on, you've got to believe that. It's in your bones that this envy and this, this rottenness and this religious spirit and this brokenness that has affected the bones. It is spiritual. It is spiritual because in your bones, come on, is where the faith and the miracle working power is. It's in the substance and it's in the very depths of your substance of who you are. Come on. Come on. This is why the enemy is working on our bones. 
why so many people are in the valley of dry bones. Come on. Because it's about the faith, the substance, the substance that's within you. Come on. That was just a, something else that God's dealing with me about that I just had to dig, and I'm going to dig a little bit more and get the, subs, the full substance of it. But we're going to start on some teaching that I wrote um, a couple years ago now. And, um, and um, I'm seeing that God's even increasing a little bit on it to bring more of a kingdom knowledge to it. But I'm going to begin to start. Um, it's called My Shift, Sons and Daughters from the Inside Out. And um, the Holy Spirit, because he, he began to tell you um, a few years ago, the Holy Spirit began to deal with me about things that I had been taught um, and ways that I had come to know as truth. A lot of them were not. A lot of them were things that had been passed down from generation to generation. Come on. Things that we believe we pass on. Right? And so a lot of times what happens is, is we don't really challenge some things that we believe. And we just take it on as truth without verifying it for ourselves. We're not seeing if it bears witness with the Holy Spirit and with the Word of God. So a lot of times what, the, what God has to do when He's beginning to do a new work in people, He has to begin to check and see where there's error, where there's wrong beliefs, where there's things that need to be healed, where there's things that we need to be delivered from. Come on. So He begins to do some searching in our own hearts and in our own minds. And if we really mean God, have your way in my life. God created me that clean heart. Come on. Renew that right spirit in me, God. Give me the mind of Christ that I may operate out of, God. Give me, Father God, everything that I need in my depths, Father God, and activate it so that I can walk as the army of God. So I can release signs, wonders, and miracles wherever I go. Come on. So that I can give you glory. So that I reflect your light and your glory in a world of darkness, God. That has to be our heart cry. And we have to mean business when we say that. We have to begin to submit ourselves to that word. We have to begin to allow him to search us. Yes, Lord. Search us, O oh Lord. Search us, God. And then give us the ability, God, to allow you to process us in these areas. So we begin to really see God when we started our ministry, when we really felt the impressing of the Holy Spirit to start. We said, God, nothing against any other minister or ministry. I want to say that right now. But we have been around and we have seen things, just like a lot of people, and we decided, God, we don't want to make certain mistakes that we've seen. We don't want to reproduce the wrong thing. We want you to get us ready. We want you to equip us. We want you to heal us. We want you to deliver us and set us free in our depths so that we don't make some of these mistakes and so that we don't hurt people and wound people all in the sake of trying to grow people up and raise them in the kingdom. Come on. So God began to download some things into me, and I guess he was checking me out to see if I really meant it. Because some of these things are painful. When you begin to allow God to search you like that. Some of these things hurt when he begins to put his hand on them. Why? Because they're familiar. They're things that we've walked around with all of our life. And we get so used to them being there. They're familiar. And when God begins to say, you have... Um, a spirit of rejection that is choking out the life of Christ in you and is freaking death to your destiny and your promise that I put upon your life because that rejection draws up every bit of life that I'm putting in you and you begin to reckon that and realize that you have had rejection from even before you went your mother's womb even though God said I knew you before you went there come on that's a warfare it's a warfare Speaking of rejection, one of the things that I found out when I was studying for this to begin teaching was there was a survey that's done, and just to show you how important it is to get delivered from rejection, is that some leading psychologists did a, um, a, a test. And what they did was they had a bunch of women, they did a clinical test, they had a bunch of women who wanted to have an abortion. But they couldn't really go through the, the aspect of actually going to a clinic and having an abortion. So they asked them to come and join this, this test that they were doing. And they had all these women, and, and about 76% of these women self-aborted. And you know what the only thing they had to do? Was speak death to their fetus. I don't want you. I hate you. I wish you would die. They spoke words of death to the fetus. And the fetus, 76% of those women, they self-aborted. Now, how powerful is your words? How powerful is rejection? Come on. How many in the body of Christ are sitting in pews 
right now eat up with rejection and they are paralyzed in the spirit. Come on. Rejection wars against your destiny. It wars against the purpose of God in your life. Come on, it brings death to what he has put in your spiritual womb. That really spoke to me when I began to read that and understand that the power of rejection. And so many people face it. Especially if you're called to ministry. That's like one of the hurdles that you have to overcome. Because you're going to be rejected by man. Yeah. You most definitely can count on that. If you haven't been rejected from your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister, your aunt, or your uncle, you're going to be rejected by somebody along the way. You know, if you think about Methuselah, and it, it, it parallels with this, you know, he was, he was dropped by his caretaker. Remember that? They were running from, the, they were afraid, they began to run, and his caretaker dropped him. But the Lord dropped him to my spirit. He says, that's what's wrong with a lot of my body. They've been dropped by their caretakers. And now they're lame. And they're hiding in, my, in, in, in Lodabar. And Lodabar means barrenness. So when you're lame and you go off hiding, come on, in your Lodabar, you become barren. But praise God, we remember the rest of the story. Because of covenant, the king sent somebody after him. Amen? And brought him out to sit him at the table of inheritance. Come on. No matter if we're in Lodabar, because we've been dropped by our caretakers, the king will send somebody after you. Amen? 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 Amen. So we need to remember that. Even if we feel rejected and dropped by our caretakers, God will send somebody after us. Amen? Amen. So we have to deal with, um, I'm going to start with the teaching now. Um, on the outline, um, this is a course of teaching. You will learn how lies, strongholds, and mindsets affect you and hinder your life and walk with God. As a Christian, you have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And you are to be a new creation, created in and displaying the image of God. And yet we find in our lives, we are often challenged and not living up to the potential that God has for us to walk in. How many feel that? How many feel like there's another level? How many feel like that there's greater things that you can do? Because God said in His Word, what greater works than Jesus you shall do. And not none of us are operating in the greater works yet, right? So there's always another level, amen? That because of wrong thought patterns, strongholds, and mindsets, that oppose the knowledge of God, the enemy is able to hinder, oppress, and torment. That's the other thing the Lord showed me this morning. I, I love how God was just, well, I was walking up the steps, and, and the Holy Spirit began to show me something. And, and I know it, it was for today. He, he showed me, He showed me these gates. He showed me the gates of our soul, which what are our eyes and our ears, right? Amen? Anything you see with your eyes or you hear with your ears, they go into the, through the gates of your soul, right? You all know that, right? Okay, so he showed me those gates, the eyes and the ear gates, okay? And then he showed me the gate of the enemy. And he said to me, he says, Ruth, he says, before an enemy can form a stronghold, a gate, come on, for that, for that, for their king to possess, come on, and, and institute a stronghold in their mind for them to rule and reign from, they first have to go through your gates. Come on. And we don't govern our gates. We're giving the enemy permission. Come on, to go through those gates and erect his own gate. His stronghold in our mind and our emotions. So if we don't govern our souls, come on. That means when the enemy starts putting thoughts in our mind, come on, of negative, uh, doubt, fear, unbelief, any kind of fiery darts that he puts in there, and we begin to listen to them and entertain them, he has done what? He has done enter through one of our gates. Okay? And if we don't begin to speak to that thought and imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ Jesus, then what happens next is it will start to what? Go through the next gate, the emotions. Because a lot of times if we don't check it at the door, it will begin to stir in our heart our emotions. Come on. And that is our response to that thought. And the next thing we know, because we didn't check it in our mind, we didn't check it on our emotions, now it's a stronghold of the enemy. He now has his gate in place. Come on. And with his gate in place, he now is going to open and shut it to any enemy that he wants to allow in. Because now he has power over your soul because why? You gave it to him. Come on. We need to guard our gates, our ears and our eyes. We need to guard our gates. 
as we're going forward in this and we're shutting down the gates of the enemy in our own life, in our own soul, we need to continue to guard our ears and our eye gates. Amen? Amen. It is our soul from our carnal mind, the will, intellect, and emotions that enable the enemy to come into our life and hinder and or harass us and keep us from walking in the place of promised victory. God is not a dictator. The will of man has been given to man to govern himself. Come on. And to allow who he will to influence their own lives. I believe that just as we are spiritually received salvation that caused our spirit man to be taken over and filled by the Holy Spirit, our soul's man needs to be saved, so to speak. Transformed, surrendered to the power of God. To bring forth that new creation that reflects the image of God. To allow to come forth and emerge what our encounter with Jesus has deposited in our depths. See, when we got saved, all this was deposited in us. We're just not walking anymore. There's interference in our own depths. There's the strongholds, the mindsets, come on, the things that we have allowed to be built up in our lives over years. And sometimes it's even generational issues that got put on us that we have to recognize it. And just because we're saved and we're not supposed to be cursed anymore. So we have to come out of agreement with some things. Because why? Our agreement gives it power. Yes. You know, because you're saved, you can't be cursed, right? Right? Amen. Because he who went to the cross became the curse. You're redeemed from the curse. But because a lot of people believe they can still walk around curse, they give it power. Come on. Come on. Our agreement gives it power. That doesn't mean we can go out and do whatever we want. That means we just have to walk in that level of righteousness and holiness and understand who we are in Christ and not give into our flesh. Amen? Amen. Come on. Most have and are, are presently dealing or have dealt with oppression. There are two types of oppression. And once we have internally corrected those things, we will see all oppression cease and diminish. Come on. How many wants to walk in a life not feeling oppression? Come on. Come on. Not having depression tapping on the shoulder every now and then. And you think you're going to have a good day, and all of a sudden it just comes on and gives you a hug. Come on. <laughs> we, we, we've got to shut these doors. Right. He said what? That you're supposed to have joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. We are the kingdom of God. We're supposed to be walking in these fruits every day. Come on. First oppression is from within. Many times that spirit has access because we have strongholds and mindsets in our mind or strongholds in our emotions. A stronghold is a place that a demon will use to take advantage of us. Strongholds and strongmen are not the same thing. A stronghold is a practiced way of thinking that has become ingrained and is automatic. It has a life and will of its own. These are areas of the mind that were a stronghold which can be performed through experiences. Now a lot of times, how many, how many just sometimes expect something to happen that's not always good? You all have this expectancy because maybe you had a, a hard life. Or maybe you're used to, um, you know, that saying, and if it weren't for bad luck, I have no bad, no luck at all. I, I find that in the name of Jesus, that ain't true for me. But I'm just saying, some people live in that dimension. Yeah, yeah. Doom, gloom, agony on me, deep dark depression, excessive misery. And what about bad luck? My past, one of my pastors just sing that all the time. And I just sit there, plead the blood, plead the blood, plead the blood. Because, see, we're speaking these things over ourselves. You know, but we don't, then, then when it starts coming on us, we're wondering why it's coming on us. But what, what are we speaking? The negativity that we speak, it gives these things power over us and access to us. And then now we're in the healing line, begging for somebody with an anointing to break depression off of us. But two days ago, what were we speaking? Come on. We, we've got to get a hold of these things because... We allow the enemy to build these strongholds in our lives. And sometimes experiences can build strongholds. People that have had a lot of trauma and drama, come on, a lot of rejections, abuse, abuse. A pattern of abuse in someone's life will build a stronghold in their life. Come on. And there's been a lot of uh, spiritual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse in society today. And these people have strongholds in their minds and emotions that they're going to need ministry to. These streets are full of people that need you to know what a stronghold and a strong man is and know how to take care of it because they're going to need freedom and liberty. Come on. When we start going out there, I'm saying we because I know that God has an assignment on this place to go out there. People need to be equipped. 
so that they know what to deal with and how to deal with it. Because these streets are filled with hurting people that need somebody that knows how to deal with what they got. Come on. Sometimes, if like, for instance, parents who are controlling and domineering, they could be operating with the spirit of Jezebel, they will cause their children to develop one of the two violent strongholds. They'll either be timid and shy, and prone to being controlled or a victim, or rebellion against parents and authority figures. See, that's what ungodly control does. That's what the spirit of Jezebel in a family setting will do. It will reproduce children that will act in a way that's not in the nature of God. Because it has developed these strongholds in their life because they were victimized by that spirit. Then there's a great chance that the child will grow up to be like the parents, a controlling and manipulative. A lot of times people that have had strong controlling spirits in their life or manipulative people, then what? A lot of times it's generational. They just didn't wake up and say, I'm going to be Jezebel today. Come on. It's, it's a learned behavior. It's something that's been passed down. A lot of times you see it in the family. Come on. So you've got to pray and you've got to break this stuff off of bloodlines and families so that it will flow. It will be a flow. A lot of people like like me, for instance, and, and well, I don't know about y'all, maybe you. Um, when we got saved, we suddenly was handed with this key to break generational cycles. Cycles off the bloodline. Because in my family, no one before me to serve God as far back as I know. So here I had a whole bloodline that was eat up with every kind of demonic junk you could think of. So when I got saved, of course, I'm redeemed, right? But now I still have these generational weaknesses. I still have these spirits that are trying to attach because generational, when something's generational, it's strong. It's a strong man that you have to contend with. Because if you don't break it off and contend with it, it's going to try to get in there and reattach itself. And then it's going to continue through you to the next generation. So we have to understand that as we are standing and warring, we're not just warring for ourselves. We're warring for generations. Come on. We're warring for our children and our children's children. Because we don't want them to be carrying the things that we've seen in our bloodline way back when or the things that we've had to contend with. Come on, we are walking in a place of authority and dominion because why we're setting captives free, even if it's our own bloodline. Come on. How many have got issues in your family that you want to see broken off? Come on. Come on. That's what we're called to do. We want to see our families free. Come on, that's our first ministry. Yes, Lord. If you have experienced abuse in your growing up years, which led to many wounds in your soul, will, and emotions, Wounded in the area of your personality, you will be very susceptible to putting up walls to protect you. It will affect your relationships. It will keep people at an arm's length. Inability to show affection. You will be hindered in your ability to show affection. Did you ever meet somebody with walls up around them? Come on. And no matter how much you try to reach out past those walls, they're fortified. Come on. I, I know I used to do that really bad. Especially when I was dealing with something. I had to catch myself because I still do it. Come on. I'll run behind that wall of protection. Come on. Where I, where I feel like I'm going to hide out a little while until the storm pass. Where, where I'm going to be safe. Come on. But see, a lot of people have these walls up because it's not just that they don't want anybody in, but also it keeps God from going in. Come on. And one of the spirits that block people from getting deliverance is the spirit of a cult. It's a blocking demon. It will literally reinforce a wall that seems impenetrable. Now a lot of people that really need deliverance in their souls, you got to come against that. Because it is a fortified wall that takes a lot of anointing to bust it. That's not possible. But the person has to definitely get out of agreement with it. Amen? Because that agreement holds it. Things that we experience can become a new mindset, a way of thinking that becomes a stronghold. Such experiences can as well erect a stronghold of anger, victimization, abuse, perversion, abandonment, and rejection. It depends on what you've experienced. Fear can be intertwined with your belief system, whether you believe it or realize it. You could be having thoughts that are anti-word of God and fear-producing. Second form of oppression is from the outside. 
This oppression is called kata dinastio, and kata means to press down, ill will towards something or someone, pushing down, pressing down, trying to position yourself above something or someone else. Did you ever have somebody that um, was strong-willed, controlling, and, and they try to enforce their dominance over you? Come on. They're trying to oppress you. They're trying to push you down, press you down, so they can be elevated above you. Okay? That's an external oppression. Okay? And that is definitely a spirit of witchcraft. Denacio means to rule, to terrorize. Now see, this is what this oppression is trying to do to you. It's trying to rule you. It's trying to terrorize you, to oppress you. Excessive power over or, or, or from above you, trying to push you down, trying to position their self over you, to exercise power or control over you. If we are free in our minds and know who we are in Christ, we will, as sons and daughters of God, resist the enemy and he shall flee. Acts 10, 38 and Ephesians 6, 10. Because of the work of the cross, you cannot be possessed if a Christian, but you can be oppressed and the enemy can attempt to place their mindsets within your mind. A mindset is a fixed mental attitude or disposition that darkness reigns from. A system of logic rooted in a lie that we have come to accept as truth. A system of thought that is behind any habitual response, addiction, compulsion, obsession, or inordinate fear, a mental or emotional command post to which the enemy has access. A stronghold is a house of lies and wrong thoughts. Now see, even, even medical science has proven this fact. A thought that you think repeatedly, consistently, it begins to cut out a groove in your mind, in your brain. Okay? Because of neurotransmitters that certain thoughts release. Okay? And I begin to see this, but when I was doing this, I began to see, I began to see a brain, and I began to see these ruts cut out. And my son, who um, it was taking uh, uh, psychology in college, I just called him and I said, I'm seeing something and I want to know if it's true. I said, is there anything to validate what I'm seeing? I said, I'm seeing this brain with these ruts, these grooves cut out. And he said, yes, Mom. He says, that's what happens when people think certain thoughts over and over. It cuts out because of the neurotransmitters. It cuts out a path in the brain. So what happens is, you know, think about a rut. If there's a rut in the ground and if you're not looking, you're going to stumble over that thing. So a lot of people are continually stubborn on, stumbling over the ruts in their mind. Come on, because they have thought for so long a certain path of thought that is engraved in their mind. This is why you have to renew your mind in the Word of God because the Holy Spirit showed me that when you renew your mind in the Word of God, it fills up that rut, it overtakes that rut, and it begins to what cut out a new path of positive thoughts, replacing the negative thoughts that people would stumble into. See, if people would get a hold of this, it would cause them to walk in victory. It would cause you to walk in a victory because so many people walk around as victims anymore. In the body of Christ, people walk around as victims. And I'm like, God, we've been given everything that heaven has to afford. We're saved. We're redeemed. We're filled with the Spirit of God. We've been given anointing, power, and authority, dominion in the earth. Why are we walking as victims? Because of this right here. The battle is the minds. And if God could ever take over our minds, which he already gave us the mind of Christ, but people are not operating out of it because it's more familiar to operate out of their carnal mind. Come on. Because in order to operate out of the mind of Christ, you have to take authority over yourself. Come on. And people don't like doing that. Because these things are familiar and they want to keep walking in it. But God is challenging us even in our thoughts this day. Stronghold in Greek means to have or to hold possession of something in a very strong way. So if you have a stronghold in your mind, these things have strong possession of you. Come on. We're allowing the enemy to have strong possession over us if we have a demonic stronghold in our mind. Is that something we need to do? Come on. A stronghold is a fortress, a castle, a prison, a fort. 
any place from which someone or a spiritual force could hold onto a territory or hold onto a person in a very strong and penetrable way. Now strongholds, you know, there's also strongholds in territories that we're going to get into later. But you know what? We cannot deal with strongholds and territories until we deal with the strongholds in us. Because that leaves us open to the enemy. This is what's happened. A lot of times people have done territorial warfare and they have strongholds in their own mind, strongholds in their own life, and suddenly they start going through all kinds of hell that they can't tolerate. Come on. A lot of them are AWOL Christians. A lot of them are on the sidelines bleeding and hurting and wounded trying to get up because they started messing with the territory of principality and power and they haven't dealt with the stronghold in their own mind. And so that principality and power said, I see that weakness. I see that door. I see that crack. We're going to go in right there, buddy. We're going in and we're going to launch an attack on them that they're not going to withstand because we have legal access, legal entry right there. We're going to bombard them. But they ain't going to take authority over us. We got authority over them. Come on. This is where the body of Christ has failed. Because we're telling them to do spiritual warfare in territories, but they haven't done spiritual warfare in their own territory. Come on. We have to raise people up this hour. And we know that they're called to be in the army of God, but they have to take care of this first. Come on. We cannot send them out to the front lines to take on regions and territories and principalities and powers. Because, see, this is what, this is what the Holy Spirit showed me one time. He said, Ruth, he said, think about this. Think about that fortress, that stronghold over a region. You got that picture? Okay. And so in that stronghold over that region, there is what? The king of the stronghold, the, the strong man. Okay. The one that's ruling and reigning from that stronghold. Okay. So then what happens is everybody that's in that territory that has that open door. Okay. Say it's, say it's Jezebel. Okay? Say Jezebel, because we've had to deal with Jezebel a lot in this region. Okay? Say it's Jezebel. So Jezebel's up there. She's a principality up there in her fortress. She on the end of that mess with her. Okay? So she is dispatching spirits of witchcraft and occult and control and manipulation. And you know where they go? There is an unseen umbilical cord attached from that principality and power to everyone that has that in their life. And that is like an umbilical cord. And she's feeding. She's feeding them. Manipulation, control, witchcraft. Come on. Um, all these things that come with Jezebel that's going through this umbilical cord from that principality and power it is feeding that person's life. Come on. Because they have that in their life that they've not dealt with. So the enemy is plaguing them. Beelzebub cannot cast out Beelzebub. Come on. If you have a spirit of Jezebel, or witchcraft, or a cult, or rejection, or whatever you're dealing with, you have no authority over it. It has authority over you because it's a part of who you are. Come on. Beelzebub cannot cast out Beelzebub. How are you going to be operating in this thing and then you're going to take authority over it? First, you need to take authority over yourself. Come on. We've got to cut these cords with these principalities and powers so that we can what? We can be used to really bring damage to them. Come on, and I think that's why it seems like over regions that the enemy is prospering is because people have not been dealing with their self in the way that they need to. So they go out there, we're going to win the city. We're going to wage this war. We're going against this principality of power. And then they get knocked on their butts. And it's a cycle. Because they've not shut down the enemy in their own life because they haven't got healing and deliverance that they needed individually. Amen? They can't contend or defend if they hadn't first what been on the men. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5. The weapons we fight which with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. A stronghold is a place in the mind or the emotions from which the enemy can take advantage of us rule, operate from, to hold us in bondage and manipulate us through the place, control us, influence, and get us to act a certain way. Oh, there's some people, now let me say this, the Holy Spirit showed me one time that it, it, certain spirits are very powerful over the mind. And they actually have a mindset. Okay? And what I say by mindset is their, their stronghold that they erect will begin to take on they will begin to take on characteristics of that spirit. Okay? 
Say, you're, say it's the spirit of rejection. And you have a stronghold of rejection. Well, suddenly you're going to start feeling like nobody likes you. You're going to start feeling like everyone's against you. You're going to start feeling like they're talking about me. You're going to start feeling like everyone in the world is against you. Come on. Because you are now exemplifying the characteristics and the nature of that spirit that has a stronghold in your mind. So suddenly people begin to act out of character. It's because of that stronghold in their mind and now they're manifesting the fruits of a spirit that is harassing them. Come on. Psalms 5, 51, 5. Surely I was simple at birth, simple from the time my mother conceived me. Also, some cultures can cause someone to be born with strongholds. Example, Irish are known to have an Irish temper. Germans are known to be stubborn. So there's certain cultures that have certain strongholds and things that they have to resist. Come on. Because it's been attached to these cultures to um, begin to harass them. Um, if your parents were addicted to anything, then you were born with a generational weakness to addictions. A tendency develops towards addictions or an addictive personality, anger, fear, etc. can as well be passed generationally. So what I'm saying is, is these strongholds that the enemy erects in our mind, we have to begin to be aware of them. We have to be sensitive to the fact, okay, devil, you got in there and you put one on me, okay? I bought a lie, I believed a lie, but now I'm coming into the truth and I'm being set free by the truth and this stronghold's coming down. I'm not going to fall for the lie anymore because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Come on, we got to start rising up with the spirit of truth and start tearing down these lies of the enemy that keep us operating as a victim and that keep us from operating in the fullness of the Godhead. Come on, like I said earlier, we were created in glory. There's glory in our DNA. There's glory in our depths. The very what? Lord of glory created us in his image. And these things that are in our depths are warned against the glory of God covering the earth like the waters cover the sea. Come on. We have to begin to deal with the barriers. We have to begin to deal with those things within ourselves that keep us from operating in the fullness of Christ Jesus. We want to see signs, wonders, and miracles. But you know what? What's in your substance? Okay? Remember the bones? What's in your substance? Is it envy that dries up the bones? Come on. Is it uh, dead man's bones, the spirit of religion? Come on. There's a lot of scriptures about bones. What's in your substance? What's in your depths? That's what we need to tap into. We need to take an examination of ourselves and say, God, what's in my substance? What's in my depths? Is there strongholds that I've still not dealt with? Is there strongholds in my emotions I've not dealt with? Am I being driven by a spirit? Am I being harassed by a spirit? See, because we're coming to the place where God says that what we were um, seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus and that he's making all our enemies a footstool. When we go through times like this, these things are coming under our feet and out of our head. Come on. We are getting victory over these things. And they are becoming our footstool, just like Christ Jesus said. And not only that, but when we come to that understanding that we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, we understand that we are sitting in a different atmosphere. We cannot be affected by the contaminants of this atmosphere on earth. Come on. It's the carnal things that keep us grounded and then thus keep us impacted by the atmosphere of earth. Okay, let me give an example real quick. I'm not going to hold you much longer, but this, this might bring it all together. Years ago, we were, we were living in a project, and I went to the washroom to do the laundry, and my little girl, she was out there, and she had a, a doll. And these little girls, that come and gathered around her, and they took the doll from her, and they threw it on top of the building. She was crying. It was her favorite doll. And of course, you know, being mama, I went over to him and I said, I really wish you would have done that. That wasn't very nice. And I took my little girl on up the steps. We lived up in the upper floor of the apartment building. I took her up the steps. And by the time I got to the top of the steps, that little girl had run into her apartment to her mama. And she told her mama. Her mama comes flying out of that downstairs apartment, looking upstairs at me, and she was more or less invited me to come downstairs for a whooping. Okay? Well, I was standing there, and I hadn't been saved long, and, and, and I'm telling you, 
I'm from Detroit, and, and I know a little bit about you know, some, some street activity. <laughs> and that old Detroit girl tried to rise up just, just for a minute. I'm not going to lie, just for a minute, I want to go down there and whoop her back. I wanted to shut her mouth. She called me everything but a white woman. I wanted to shut her mouth. And I'm standing there, and I had my hand on the door, and I was looking over, and the more she cussed me, the more I wanted to go bless her back, and it wasn't holy. And the Holy Spirit quickly, as I took my hand off that door handle, and I was really contemplating going down them steps, the Holy Spirit got me. He said, if you go down them steps to her level, I cannot protect you in what's about to happen. About the time the Holy Spirit gripped me with that, I looked back over. It wasn't just her. There was five other women down there. Ooh. If I had went down those steps, this old white girl from Detroit would have got her butt stomped. See, so what happened was the Holy Spirit used that as an example. Whenever I have the opportunity to take the high road, that's the road I need to take. Because if I am operating out of my carnal nature, carnal man is enmity with God. When we're operating out of our flesh and our carnal nature, we are losing out on the protection of God. So as we separate ourselves from these strongholds and these things that keep us operating out of our flesh, we're coming into a heavenly atmosphere. This is what it's about. You know, this may be, oh, this is a lot of in-depth stuff. This is maybe not exciting stuff, but I'm telling you, the outcome will cause you to know that you're seated in heavenly places and you're going to come out of this earthly atmosphere and this earthly realm and you're going to begin to operate in a higher dimension. The very atmosphere that you breathe is going to be that atmosphere of heaven. You're not going to be polluted and contaminated by the principality and power of this air because you're going to be seated and you know you're seated and these enemies are going to be your footstool and when you pray down from heaven, you're praying down from heaven and you're bringing down heaven upon the earth and it's crushing. See, the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. Come on. So we've got to come up in our understanding. We've got to come up in our emotions. We've got to walk in the spirit of sons of God and be led by the spirit of God. Come on. So that we understand our dominion and authority and we begin to walk in it and we're not shortchanged and we're not cheated out of it because we're kings of the most high God and we're a royal priesthood. Come on. Kings and priests under God. A holy nation. And we need to be operating out of that dominion. And this is what it's about. It's, it's not an exciting teaching, but I'm telling you, if you walk this out, you're going to come to a new dimension. You're going to be healed and you're inward man. Come on, you're going to be everywhere whole. You're going to come into a place of unity with the Spirit of God like never before because these strongholds and these mindsets, well, they keep us in division with God. And we're wondering why we're laboring and not getting anywhere. Come on. It's because within us, we're out of agreement with God. When there's unity, there is a commanded blessing. We want to walk in the commanded blessing. We've got to be unified with the Spirit of God in our mind, in our emotions, with all of us. Uh -huh. From our depths. Yes. These carnal strongholds and thoughts and imaginations and things that the enemy puts in us that keep us in division with God. Come on. We don't receive the best. Because we, like I said, carnal man is the enemy of God. We may be saved, but that's parts of us that's warned against God in our depths. Come on. And it's keeping us from walking as the victors that he's called us to. Amen? So, you making anything out of this? Yes. Amen? Yes. The end result is better than the start. Yes. yes. The end result is better than the start. Amen? to be seated. I'm just tapping into some things that God is downloading in me and I'm telling you what he's showing me is heaven on earth. You know the, the, the doomsday prophets that are speaking death and destruction. I, I'm telling you that's a lie of the enemy. That's not what God has for this planet earth right now. He has a time of construction. The glory of God has not even been revealed yet. He says he's not coming back because the prophets are saying it's doomsday. They're a bunch of liars. He says, I'm not coming back till everything's been restored. Has everything been restored on the earth yet? No. Is Jesus coming back yet? No. He says, when this message has been preached 
It's not a salvation message. It's the kingdom of God message. The kingdom of God message has just started to be preached. Yes. Come on. Yes. It's not, I'm not coming back to this message. Of my kingdom has been preached to all the earth. It's just started to get preached. And he ain't coming back right now. He ain't coming back right now. We have a work to do. Yes. Have you seen restoration of all things? Well, I know I haven't. Well, guess what? He's waiting on us to rise up and do it. He's given us all power and authority and dominion. He said in Genesis, what? Take authority. Take dominion. He's waiting for that to be restored in us. For us to rise up and do that. And prepare the way for him to come back. Come on. Until we see all things restored, he ain't coming back. I don't care what they lie on TV and say. It's a lie. He ain't coming back. A lot of the things that they call end times was have to do with the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD. They're out of order. They're getting rich off of us. Believe it or not. Come on. You've got to know the times and seasons of the word. Come on. It's important. If not, we'll be deceived. This is not time for destruction. It's time for construction. And when you get the mind of God in operation, you begin to connect with his thoughts and his ways, which are higher than ours. Come on. You begin to operate in a new realm, think differently, see things differently. Come on. Begin to pray differently. Begin to declare differently because you know who you are and your authority and dominion that you have. Come on. This is what it's about. Realizing that you don't have to be harassed by the devils that are in the atmosphere. Realizing that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Realizing that you operate out of a higher dimension in the kingdom of heaven. That's where he seated you. Come on. We're operating far below what he gave us, folks. Why? Because of this right here. Because of this right here. This limits God right here. What we think. What we believe. What we conceive. What we perceive, what comes forth right here, stops God and how He wants to move and form us. Amen? Amen? So Father, we just give you praise right now, God. We give you honor and glory and praise, God. We thank you, Father God, that we just declare, Father God, that seeds of truth are released into this atmosphere, God. That even, Father God, the people down the street, God, will begin to have a mind shift, God. That your Holy Spirit goes forward and begins to confront strongholds in their minds and emotions, God. That your Spirit goes forth and begins to draw those daily that shall be saved, oh God. God, we declare, Father God, life and truth into this community, God. We declare the kingdom of God shall arise in this community, God. And God, in every heart and every life that's attached to this ministry, God. We declare, Father God, our mind shift. We declare, oh God, strongholds, God. Every thought and imagination that exalts us up against the knowledge of Christ Jesus, come down in the name of Jesus. We speak healing to their emotions. We speak healing to their mind, God. We speak deliverance where deliverance is needed, oh God. God, they didn't have to be here, God. It is now seated in the atmosphere. It's seated in the womb of this ministry, and it shall be birth for, and it shall partake of it in the name of Jesus. God, you are raising up saints, God. Mature sons this hour, God. Some Father God, with a hell-shaking anointing upon them, God. And they won't back down and they won't be fearful. They won't bend, they won't bow, they won't break, oh God. They know who they are in Christ. I speak it now. They're sons of the Most High, God. And they will walk in their authority, power, and dominion. And they will possess the land in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you, Father, for doing this work in all of our lives, God. And sealing them with the blood, Lord. Father God, quicken everyone, God. And any open gate, any open door, Father God, that needs to be shut, God. Help us, Father God, to overcome. Because we are overcomers. Because the overcomer that overcame it all dwells in us already, Father. And we access that overcoming power now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.